We're back. Let's talk about the rules of mass spectrometry. All right, so we're going to start with carbon since that's one of the main elements in organic chemistry. And as I was talking about in the previous video, we have two main isotopes to be concerned about, carbon-12 and carbon-13. The mass difference between them being a one atomic mass unit. All right, so what that means is that when you look at your sample, you ionize your sample. Now you have a cation. The mass of your cation is virtually the same as the mass of the neutral compound. And that's the reference mass that um, technically that will be, let's say, 100%. So if you ionize that and you pass it through, 100% um, will be the substance that contains only carbon-12. But then there is 1.1% that some of the carbon present in there, or any of the carbon present in your molecule, may be present in the form of carbon-13, which is one atomic mass unit higher than the base value. So what that means is that when you look at the mass spectrum, not only will you have the base mass, which is going to be the predominant uh, signal that you'll see, but then one mass higher than that, so M plus plus one, will be shown you know, with a much lesser value, roughly of 1.1%. So for instance, let's say that we have benzene, C6H6. There is six carbons, if you multiply 6 by 12, which is the atomic mass of carbon, that will give you uh, 72. 72 plus 6, which is the six hydrogens you have here, gives you 78. So this is the base mass, your M plus mass for this molecule. The M plus plus 1 mass is going to be just one higher than that, 79. All right, now check this out. If the M plus mass is 100%, the M plus plus one mass, which is now based on carbon 13, is going to simply be six, the six carbons multiplied by 6.1, which will give you an overall percentage of 6.6. .6. And so what this basically does for you is give you via the M plus plus one peak, the content of carbon. So when you actually take a batch of sample that you may or may not know what it is, if you pass it through the mass spectrometer, let's say that we get the following, an M plus uh, value of 58, which is 100% in abundance, and then the M plus plus one peak, the one that's one higher, 59, is present as 4.3%. So what you can do with this information to determine how much carbon you have is to simply divide the 4.3% by 1.1%, because we know that's the percentage of carbon-13 that we could have um, in theory. And if you do that, you're going to get a value that's very close to four. And in essence, what this tells you is that your sample contains four carbons. And since each carbon is worth 12 grams per mole, four carbons will be equal to 48 grams per mole. All right, now, looking back at the original mass, the original mass is 58. So subtracting the 48, which is the mass of the four carbons from 58, gives you 10. And taking into account that hydrogen has an atomic mass of one, what this is telling you right now is that your formula is C4H10. And there's one little check that you have to perform before you call it a day. And that is the fact that the maximum number of hydrogens that you can have based on the content of carbon is twice the amount of carbon plus two more. So if you have CN, N being the number of carbons, you can have at most two N plus two hydrogens. That is to say that if this is uh, one carbon, two times one is two plus two is four, right? So you can have a maximum of four hydrogens when there is one carbon. If this is two, so you have two carbons, well, you plug a two in here, that will be two times two, which is four, four plus two will be six. And that's how many hydrogens you can have max. The idea is that you can have no more than the maximum. You can have up until the maximum, you can have less than the maximum, but you can never have more than the maximum value. And this is how you'll know whether you're missing other elements in your structure. All right, but once more, the M plus plus one peak is the one that will give you the content of carbon. Simply divide the percentage by 1.1 and that will give you the amount of carbon that your molecule possesses. 
All right, now let's take a look at nitrogen. This is an interesting element. Because um, first things first, uh, there are two isotopes, but the second one, nitrogen-15, is very small uh, to the point where we just regard it as being insignificant. It's not really going to show up in most mass spectra that you may take. All right, but there's something interesting about nitrogen that I want to point out right now. And that is the fact that when you do have nitrogen present, specifically one nitrogen present, and, and notice here that I just have a set of different isomers present, uh, pretty much they all have the same molecular formula. They just happen to have different structural uh, features, but they all contain one nitrogen. And what I want you to know is that no matter whether you have two hydrogens bound to the nitrogen, only one, maybe you have no hydrogen bound to the nitrogen, no matter what, the molecular mass is an odd number, 59 grams per mole, 59 grams per mole, 59 grams per mole, and 59 grams per mole. Uh, whereas the regular alkane from which we can derive the various amines that you see here has an even mass. All right, now you might say, okay, well, so what? Well, the thing is this, go from nitrogen down to phosphorus and you might think well that's probably going to be an odd number because it's on the same group as nitrogen but the truth of the matter is that if you substitute nitrogen with phosphorus you end up getting even numbers for the atomic masses and you might think well how is that happening well the reason this is happening is because unlike nitrogen for which the main isotope has an even atomic mass to begin with Phosphorus has an odd mass, and so this makes the picture different altogether. Now you're one off from what nitrogen has, therefore, instead of ending up with odd numbers, you end up now with even numbers. And you could say, well, okay, what about um, what about the halogens? What if you substitute, you know, alkanes with halogens? Um, it doesn't matter if you use chlorine or bromine, same deal. You end up with even numbers. And if you put in oxygen or sulfur, uh, same deal find out the mass that the molecular mass of all of these molecules and you find out that all of them have even numbers so the fact that nitrogen gives you odd numbers is actually rather unique and it's not just something to be overlooked in fact we use that as our method of determination as to how much nitrogen we have uh, the overall rule is as follows if the base mass the m plus mass is odd you're going to have an odd number of nitrogens. That is to say that you could have one nitrogen, you could have three nitrogens, you could even have five nitrogens. It really depends on the size of the molecule, but it will, it will have to be an odd number of nitrogens if M plus is odd. On the other hand, if M plus happens to be even, the nitrogen also must be even. And here's the kicker. Zero counts as an even number. So if an M plus mass happens to be an even number, you could end up with no nitrogen, and that's fine. You could end up with two, maybe four. Those are possibilities, but depending on the actual mass of the molecule, they may not actually work out. So keep this in mind. And zero is an even number for nitrogen. All right, so odd equals odd, even equals even in terms of the content of nitrogen. Okay, so that brings us to chlorine. All right, for chlorine, we mentioned in the previous video that there are two isotopes, chlorine-35 and chlorine-37, and they're separated by an overall mass difference of two. So for the base mass of this molecule that contains carbon-12 and chlorine-35, this can be your 100%, but remember that chlorine-35 is three times as big as chlorine-37. So what you end up finding out is that two masses higher than the base mass at M plus plus two you get a peak that is roughly a third the size of the first one. And you can see it right here. This is the main peak. And then this is the peak at M plus plus two, which is roughly a third of that one. All right, so the way this kind of works out is um, similar to what we saw with carbon. Um, let's start first by deriving the percentages, right? So we got uh, three carbons here, seven hydrogens and one chlorine. If we add the masses of all of that, basically get the molecular mass, we get a mass of 78, and that will be our 100%. M plus plus one will be 79, and M plus plus two will be 80. Basically one more, and then one more. All right, now in terms of the percentages, M plus plus one is all about carbon. 
we only have three carbons in the molecule, multiply that by 1.1, we will get 3.3. M plus plus two in this case is all about chlorine, and the percentage is 33. We only have one chlorine, multiply that by 33, you will get 33. And those will be the percentages you will actually see in your mass spectrum. All right, now for the real thing, what you will actually be given is the mass spectrum, right? So you'll see the M plus mass at 118, 100%. M plus plus one mass of 119 uh, with 6.5% abundance, and then the M plus plus two peak at 120 with 32% abundance. So what you would do with this information is first of all narrow down on the well, first pay attention to the M plus mass. That's an even number, so this tells you you could have zero nitrogens potentially two, but zero nitrogens is a possibility. Now the M plus plus one will give you the number of carbons, so you use the 6.5 divided by 1.1 and that will give you a value very close to 6 which tells us that we're dealing with 6 carbons which equate to 72 grams per mole. If we subtract that mass from the original mass of 118 that gives us 46. Now you might be tempted to say okay well that's uh, that's the number of hydrogens we have in the formula but for 6 hydrogens the most we could have is a total of 14 because of CN H2N plus 2 formula. Uh, so what this tells us is that we have another element to account for, which is chlorine, and that's where the M plus plus two peak comes in. Uh, this value is 32, and basically, if you're dealing with chlorine, you're going to have multiples of 33, roughly speaking, for the percentage, and this is pretty much a multiple of 33. It's 33 pretty itself, if we want to be technical. So divide those two numbers uh, together, 32 by 33, you get pretty much one, which tells you that there is one chlorine present. So now we have six carbons and one chlorine in the molecule that amounts for a total mass of 107. Subtracting that from the original, which is 118, tells us that we have 11. And so putting 11 hydrogens on six carbons, that's totally okay, because you could have had uh, not only twice as much, which is 12, but then two more of that. So 14 is the maximum, 11 being below 14, that's totally fine. All right, now let's take a look at bromine. Similar idea. We're going to have those masses, M plus, M plus plus one, M plus plus two, because the isotopes are off by two units. Uh, M plus plus one, yet again, is all about carbon, right? So in this case, three carbons will be 3.3%. The M plus plus two peak will be all about bromine. And if you only have one bromine, then you'll end up with roughly the same percentage abundance, abundance as the M plus peak itself. And when you look at an spectrum, it could be a little bit overwhelming at first because you might see a lot of peaks, especially if there is multiple bromines present. Uh, but you will still have the M plus peak. Here I'm just putting plus zero, but this is just M plus peak at 214. You have the M plus plus one and you have the M plus plus two peaks with the corresponding percentages, 51.4, 2.2, and 100. Okay, so... First things that we need to do is we need to convert the M plus peak up to 100. And this is roughly, you know, a multiplication by two, roughly speaking. I'm going to show you a little bit later how you do this properly. But if you multiply everything by two, you will get the M plus peak pretty much at 100%, right? And then the 2.2 will be turning to 4.4, the 100 will be turning to 200, and so on and so forth. All right, now looking at the M plus plus one peak, which is 4.4, if we divide that by 1.1, we end up with four, which tells us that we have four carbons in the molecule for a total of 48 grams per mole. Subtracting that from the original mass of 214 gives us a residual value of 166, which means that we're missing a lot of atoms aside from hydrogen. All right, so here's where the bromine comes in. Now the idea right here is to look at the value of the M plus plus two peak, because 33% is roughly the values that you expect to see, at least multiples of that, if you if you have chlorine in your molecule. But if you have bromine, you expect to see values which are multiples of 100. And 200 right here is definitely a multiple of 100, which tells us that this is probably bromine. So dividing 200 by 100 tells us that there is two bromines present in the molecule. Now. The bromines have an overall mass of 79, so we'll go with that, 79 times 2, which is roughly 178. You add the 48 to that, you get 206. 
subtract 206 from the original mass of 214, that tells you that you have eight hydrogens left over to account for. So this will be the formula. And once more, if you multiply four by two, you get eight. If you add two to that, you get 10. And eight hydrogens is below 10, so this is perfect. This is the formula. All right, this brings us to the last set of elements, oxygen and sulfur. And uh, the thing with these two elements is that you go from oxygen 16 to oxygen 18. Those are the main ones. But notice the value, 0.2%. That's very much insignificant. And for sulfur, going from sulfur 32 to sulfur 34, the value of sulfur 34 is, is okay. Uh, it's not the best, but it's not insignificant. So for sulfur, we're going to see an M plus plus 2 peak, whereas for oxygen, we usually rarely ever see it. All right, so let me show you an example of how this is going to play out. Oh, excuse me. Actually, this is the example. <laughs> All right, so uh, the idea right here is that for a molecule here with oxygen, you will get, you know, 3.3% for your M plus plus one peak, whereas your M plus peak will be 100%. But the oxygen being so insignificant will give you a value of barely 0.2, which rarely ever even shows up in your spectrum. Uh, sulfur, however, will give you a value of about 4%. And so when you look at the M plus plus two peak, you want to be looking for um, multiples of four because if you do have multiples of four there's a good chance that you're dealing with sulfur and you must divide the percentage that you see on the m plus plus two pick by four to determine how many sulfurs there are in your formula okay now to summarize this the m plus plus one pick is going to determine how many carbons you have simply divide the value by 1.1 the percentage value by 1.1 the m plus plus two pick will be used to determine the value of chlorine, which is going to be in multiples of 33, the value of bromine, which is going to be in multiples of 100, and the value of sulfur, which is in values of uh, multiples of 4. Uh, for nitrogen, if the molar mass of, of the main thing, so the, if the M plus mass is odd, you have an odd number of nitrogens. If the molar mass is even, the M plus mass is even, you're going to have an even number of nitrogens with zero counting as an even value. And if none of these situations is met or you don't even have an M plus plus two peak, but you have too many hydrogens after you do your determination, that may tell you that you have oxygen present in your molecule. And you might use that to lower the value to end up with a proper amount of hydrogen in your molecule. Okay, in the next video, we're going to talk about the index of hydrogen deficiency. and um, we'll start delving into this idea of drawing um, actual isomers for molecules. Okay, so see you in the next video.